Tawheed, yes, Laila. Because it's the truth, man. This is the truth. There's no other way. There's no multiple ways, brothers and sisters. People are preaching today, what? Religious pluralism, right? You got yours, I got mine. You know, we hold hands, and that's it. And we can just move on in life, right? And we're all going to the same place, right? But this doesn't work, brothers and sisters, rationally speaking and logically. Now, I don't want you to think, now, look, this guy is being all, like, hard and, you know, He's, he's being extremist or fundamentalist or anything. This has nothing to do with fundamentalism. We, this has nothing to do with anything except to, there cannot be two truths. There can be two days or night and day. It's either night or day. It's either night or day. It's either sun or the moon. One of them will take over the other one. You cannot have different ways to God. There's, and that's why subhanAllah, Allah tells us, Allah huwa liyu ladhina aman yukhrijuhum mina dhulumati ila nur. Dhulumat in the Quran is plural because there's many ways to go astray. But nur is only one. There's only one right path. There's only one God. There's only one way to Him. There's only one way from the beginning of the creation of mankind, from Adam, the first person, till the last man that will live on this earth. There's only one way. And it's always been like that. Muslim is not something new. Moses, Moses, who is ethnically Jewish, was a Muslim. Jesus, who is ethnically Jewish, was a Muslim. Because he submitted to Allah, to God. Abraham, who was neither a Jew or a Christian or anything along those lines, he was a Muslim. And all Adam was a Muslim. And Noah was a Muslim. They're not from any of these back. He was not an Arab. Noah was not an Arab. Noah was a Jewish. But he was a Muslim he submitted his will to God. This is the basic distinction. Time. So what happens when you become brothers and sisters? We need to be careful first and foremost. This is the first advice that is directly. We have to be careful of shaitan. <laughs> he is a clear enemy to you. Don't follow the steps of Satan. Why? Why? Well, he promised that he will misguide us. Shaitan's, by the, by the words, Allah SWT tells us about what Shaitan said. That Shaitan says, قَالَ فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي that shaitan says that because of you have because of why you have misguided me I will wait for them on the straight path your straight path where will he wait? will he wait for you in the club? will he wait for you they're drinking and doing drugs and doping. No. He doesn't need to wait for, for you there. He doesn't need to wait for those people. He will wait for you. You know where? On the, on the, on the footsteps. The steps of the masjid. So you can argue with your brother. He will wait for you in your house so you can argue with your wife. So you can divorce her. He will wait for you even in the masjid. As the Prophet said, when people didn't straighten up the lines, and today people are walking up and down, not putting the lines straight. One is there, there. You have to make this, you know, the split so you can, so you can uh, put foot to foot and shoulder to shoulder. And the Prophet said that I saw in Salah the shayateen coming in between the spaces, man. If you do not line up the line, Allah will cause your hearts to not to be aligned. Subhanallah, the first thing that you do when someone does these kind of things, 
in salah is that you feel somehow weird towards it, isn't it? It's like, why is this guy doing it? In your salah, man. Because shaitan has come. I said, yeah, this guy is, <laughs> he's like, what? look at him. Subhanallah. So we, the shaitan will come, man. The, the, as the hadith says, that he runs in the, in the blood of son of Adam. He runs in there. What does he say then? Look at this, subhanallah. Then I will take them, I will attack them, I will come to them from the front and from the back and from their right and from their left. And you will, you'll find most of them that they will not be thankful. Allahu Akbar, man. Look at our situation today. What? People are not happy with anything. We want more and more. How many times we say Alhamdulillah for what we have? And you're really meaning it. Not just like, give a Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. No. Like really to say Alhamdulillah for whatever we have. Actually, most people were not thankful. SubhanAllah. And this is what shaitan is doing. He's trying every single way that he can to misguide us. And subhanAllah, look at this. He will come from us from the front, back, right, left. And subhanAllah, in the tafsir, Ibn Kathir mentions, may Allah be pleased with him, that he didn't mention from above. Why? Because the mercy of Allah descends from above. He, shaitan cannot come from above. Allah descends His mercy from above. Shaitan can come from any other way. But not from above. Never. So Shaitan, if we look at Adam السلام, he was not able actually to get Adam to commit shirk. He wants us to commit shirk. He wants the new Muslims, the existing Muslims, the one who have turned to Islam, to commit shirk. To say that there's others to be worshipped with Allah or to go and ask others than Allah or many other forms of shirk. He wants us, this is his main goal. But able to get Adam to do that. So what did he do? He tried to get him to disobey Allah. Shaitan will try to get us to make bid'ah, to innovate, to go astray, to be disobedient. Whatever he can do, and you make it think sometimes that it will get us closer to Allah. What's the proof for that? Well, it's, a, it's interesting because it says in the Quran, فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِ الشَّيْطَانُ قَالَ يَا آدَمُ هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَالْمُلْكٍ لَا, لا يَبْلَى يعني He says that Shaitan, he, was, he did waswasa, he whispered to him. And he said, Oh Adam, should I not guide you or show you to a tree that is, will give you life, everlasting life, and a kingdom that will never perish? So he didn't say, Go do this. He's actually, what is he saying? He's going to get life. Actually, Adam loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslims, when they come to the deen, they come with strong, strong attachment. It's like the, the, the concept of, you know, the, the, the phenomenon of the, you know, being zealous, the zealous, convert zealous, you know, the zealousy of, the, of a convert. You're just like so motivated and you want to do it. And the shaitan will just give you something to actually you thinking that you're actually getting closer to Allah. And this is what he did to Adam. He says, I'm going to give you a tree that will give you life forever. You can worship Allah forever. You can be in this kingdom forever. He didn't tell him that, oh, this or that. No. Shaitan will not come to you and give you a bottle of vodka. It looks like vodka. It will make it look like water. He will package it looking like water. Looking it nice. زَيَّنَ لَهُمْ عَمَالَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ He will make it like zina, like beautified. Shaitan has beautified their deeds. So Adam thought that I will be close to Allah. People today think that if I do this and that, or I can do that or this, 
I'll be get closer to Allah. I will become closer to Allah. It's like the Prophet is not, he's, he has fallen short in delivering something to us that would save us. But he said that I have not left anything out that will get you closer to Allah or save you from hellfire. I've given everything. That, and Allah says that today I've perfected your religion. And I've chosen Islam for you. People are, but shaitan will tell you, no, you need more. You need to do more. That's why those people came to the Prophet and said, I can do more. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sleep, I'm just gonna pray Qiyam. I'm not gonna break my fast. I'm not gonna get married. They wanted to do more than Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, this is not, I pray and I sleep. I fast and I break it. I get married. Whoever doesn't follow this is not from me. Not from me. So shaitan is playing tricks. And this is, he is angry that you have committed to Islam. He is angry that you are a new Muslim. He is angry even that you are seeking, that you are thinking about becoming a Muslim. So you put doubts in you. You say, look at these people. Look at these people, what these people are doing. Look at the TV. Look, how can you want to be with these people? This is what shaitan will do. Type. So we need to be careful of shaitan. We need to be very, very careful. Islam is simple, man. Very simple. Protect yourself. Protect your deen. The next thing, after, let's say, we get rid of this issue, and you can't really, you, this will be a lifelong battle, but one of the things that comes up is to the family. How do you tell your family you've become a Muslim? How do you tell your family that you have committed to Islam? How do you tell your friends? How do you call both of them to Islam? This is very hard. And a lot of people become Muslim, like myself when I became Muslim. I went to my mom and I told her, you're going to hell! She's like, what? <laughs> what is people teaching you? Crazy! I literally just went like, listen mom, there's two ways only. It's either hell or heaven. Which one are you going to take? And she's like, I didn't even tell anything about what is Islam, this, just that. Okay, you're going to hell. This is not wisdom. It's not hikmah. Okay? It's not hikmah. Even the Prophet he didn't start with that. He did not start with that. It took a few years till he actually gave that, that call on the hill that there's an army, if there were an army behind. Okay? Till he established his trustworthiness. Till he was, he was an established person in his, in his community. If we just be, we're like a thug or something, and then all of a sudden we decided to, Allah guide us, and we didn't establish any trust, nothing, no change in behavior, and all of a sudden we just, you know, we just come off, you know, we became Muslim. Yesterday we were boozing up and, you know, doping, and now we're going to our parents' bag. Like, You're going to hell. <laughs> it's not wisdom. So we need to look at the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is the manual for da'wah, brothers and sisters. We need to look at his seerah, his life. He, he was established. Establish yourself. Establish your trust. Of course, at the same time, you should give da'wah. You should slowly, but be careful. Take it step by step. Of course, you should not waste time because they might die. But be firm. But be soft. Have rifq. And ask, tell them about Islam. Show them Islam in your behavior. Show them that I've been a Muslim. Actually, one of the brothers, subhanAllah, he used to beat his parents, man. He used to beat his parents. And he became Muslim. And you know what he did? He went to his mom and kissed her hands and her feet. And she's like, what? What are you doing? Are you crazy? And he kept doing that. And she finally like, what's wrong with you? Just last week you're pounding us. And now you're doing this? Like he's really gone nuts. And he said, no, Islam. I have become a Muslim. So imagine the impact, man. Just a few days ago someone's beating you and now He's kissing your, your, your hands. Allah Akbar. Big difference. Big difference. So, tell them slowly. 
open it, but you need to tell them. We need